So the three of them yesterday, remember? How are you guys doing today? Unbelievable. <laughs> you didn't remember. How are you guys doing today? Unbelievable. They remember that but they need more like a Red Bull or something? <laughs> this row here. The whole the whole place. Are you gonna win? Yes! Or do you want me to go to the next row to see? No. How are you guys doing today? Unbelievable. I raise the bar. How are you guys doing today? Unbelievable. Okay, one more chance for you guys because you were the first one. Stand up, guys. How are you guys doing today? Unbelievable. I got it. Okay, I got some of your presents over there. Okay, guys, let me connect this today. So, today is a little different than yesterday. If you weren't here yesterday, don't worry. <laughs> I, I, I'm on already. It's going. Okay, got it. Perfect. So today, no, 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 look at that. Here. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how I became a, a, a regional vice president. First of all, when when Glenn Williams was standing here and he said, "Stand up if this is, this is your first event," I it reminds me of my first. Event. The first time that I went to an event, uh, the way that my upline made me go to the event, he said, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, nothing. Well, on Saturday, I didn't do anything on weekend. What are you doing tomorrow? Nothing. You want to go have lunch? Sure. Okay, so where do I need you? I asked. I said, no, 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 I'll pick you up. <laughs> so he picked me up, and he brought me to an event. I was like, how long is it going to take? He said, no worries, it's going to be quick. We have lunch there in the middle of time, and then... We come back and then we leave early. <laughs> okay, so I sat next to the door. <laughs> there was an Uber that, that I knew at that moment at least. I was 2014 and there wasn't any Uber. So I was thinking, I gotta leave. I didn't have my car. So I was like, what am I doing here? This guy, he played me on my car. So I'm sitting here, I saw all these people, it's not common for me, it wasn't to be in a crowd like this. So if you knew it's rare, it's rare, it's rare, or weird, it is, it is, it is weird, it doesn't matter, don't worry. So I started looking at all those people, and then this guy, Omar Oropes, and he was talking from the stage, in shorts. He said, I make a, I make a million, I'm rich, I believe or not. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look, who is this up? <laughs> who's, who's that guy? But then I was looking at all those people, I was like, those guys are making money on all these people around here. They're so stupid. I'm not stupid. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. So I'm sitting there like this. Looking, then during the recognition. 50,000, 50,000. No, it wasn't like this. So. 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 200,000, 200,000, 200,000, 300,000, 300,000, 500,000, 800,000, what the heck is going on? So I was like, if all those guys can make that money, I don't think I'm just, I'm not the most stupid guy in the world. Remember, I was thinking before that the guys that were speaking from here, they were making the money off of the people that were sitting there. Then I was thinking different. I was thinking, what if I am the stupid one? <laughs> the <shit. laughs> then I changed my position from being like this to this. <laughs> like a lion with a prey. I was like, if he can make 50,000, I can make 50,000. <laughs> but I wasn't sure, I didn't know how. I was just thinking, imagine if there's a race today. Today, we're going to race. Nobody here runs. Let's say that nobody here runs, or one or two runs. We're going to have a race for five blocks. Are you going to be the last one? No. Exactly. It was the same thing that I thought. <laughs> so, if all those people like Glenn Williams are in there, are making that money, are you going to be the only one that doesn't make the money? No. no. If you have that mindset, you're too, you're, you're, you're too good. Can I just can I get off stage? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the only thing you need to understand. If everybody, if all those people can make that money, you can make the money. That's it. Okay? So this is how I started in Primerica. I'm from Miami. First of all, I don't make money off of you. So what I'm telling you here is with honesty. I don't get paid for being here. 
Acela e am întins la mai tinder, nu au în anything since yesterday. I'm like, well, can I get it? <laughs> you see how I jump from America? That's how I look that stupid face. <laughs> I was young, I still was young, but I was a little innocent. I'm still in, I'm still innocent, but I like, was like, uh, I wasn't aware of the reality of the world at that moment. Okay, this is, you know that I'm coming from a hierarchy that has over 2,300 license agents, uh, over 24 RDPs. One SVP, one SNSD making $1.8 million a year. This is that hierarchy. Five years ago. That's the Naranjo organization. The huge office. That guy in the back in the circle, that's me. <laughs> you don't see my face. You know what? That I, was, I just asked somebody in the back, how do you call your, your kid in back? He said, a mother. I said, okay, a mother. You know why I asked that? Because I was looking at this picture. And I was like, what am I doing with my mouth? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what am I doing with my mouth. I was like, oh, crap. Now remember, I had a hole in my mother. And I didn't have money to fix it. That shirt that I'm wearing, I bought it at a place called Ross. Ross is like uh, cheap clothes. The jeans that I was wearing, I bought them at Marshalls. That's another place for cheap clothes. I bought them a bigger size and I made them uh, fit here. <laughs> yeah, because they were decent. But I, they cost me like $25. The shoes that I was wearing, because I remember the whole outfit, it didn't fit my, my it didn't fit me. They were too tight, but they, would look, they look cool. <laughs> but that's the one that I found at Marshalls. So I'm showing you where I'm coming from. I, I'm, I wasn't making $500,000 a year back then. People tell me, oh, Miguel, but for you it's easy to recruit because you, you come in here wearing Rolex and Louis Vuitton and that thing. I said, look, the punk. I didn't have the money. <laughs> I didn't have the money. I was broke, maybe broker than you are. I didn't have it. So I came here. I didn't, they, they, when you get recruited, I don't know, in Atlanta is the same thing, in Canada is the same thing, 99 and 25. When you get recruited, you pay $99 for your background check and $25 for your platform. That, how much is that total? $124. You know how much I had in my account the day I got recruited? $123. <laughs> but the good thing is that back then, you had to pay the $99 up front and the $25 on the first of a month. So I was, I was able to get recruited. I didn't have the money to get recruited. These are my numbers from 2014. In March, I did three by three. In April, seven by 7,500. That's seven people in my team, 7,500 in premium. In May, we taught me how to prospect. <laughs> so I thought for a girl. <laughs> At a grocery store, and I disappeared for May, June, and July. <laughs> he told me so well that I was broke and I was dating a Miss Utah, ex Miss Utah. He told me, wow! <laughs> but he didn't tell me, Miguel, I was worth the business. He said, just go prosper. Well, I was prospecting. <laughs> So what I started doing uh, at that time, in, when I realized that she didn't want to come to work with me in America, and I knew that I wanted to do something out of my life, I was just have a girl, I broke up with her. <laughs> yeah, I decided to work out with her. I had a friend, his, his, his wife, she's a, she's a TV personality. And he told me, I was talking to him. I was like, how do you deal with that? He said, man, if I knew that I was going to be like that before getting married, I would have done it. Really, is that bad? I say, yes, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> she's pretty, yeah, I know, man. Everybody's calling her, everybody's texting. She's with people taking pictures all the time. I hate that guy. So I was like, mm, I don't like that. I said, you don't like it? Call her right now. So, okay, that was a Saturday, that was a Friday night, Saturday morning, I call her. Hey, I need to meet with you. Yeah, sure, let's meet here. Please, please, coffee place. I went to the coffee place. Okay, uh, we can't continue doing this. She's like, what? I said, yeah, are you, are you breaking up with me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, I am. 
And she was like, what happened? Like, no, 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 that's it. The things that also when we were driving by our office, I told her, look, that's my office. And she was like, okay. <laughs> she didn't pay attention. She didn't look. She was like, mm-mm, that doesn't look good. So I started going back to the office and listening to what people or what they were teaching me. I'm going to show you something really quick, but then I'm going to go deeper with this. I started doing this in the morning. This is meditation. How I started doing it? Giving thanks for everything that I have, like three, four, five minutes. Then giving thanks for everything that I wanted to have, like if I already had it. So in the morning I was like, thank you God for my mother, thank you God for my nephew, I love him very much, thank you God for my sister, she's always with me, thank you God for my daddy, she's always provided for me, thank you God for my brother, he's always been there for me, thank you God, for everything that you have. Then thank you God for the more than 100 license agents that I have in my team, I only have one of those names. <laughs> thank you God for making $101,200, I don't know why I said that number. I was saying, thank you God for making $101,200 101, $101, $101, by the end of December. Thank you God for become, for thank you God for being promoted to RVP by convention. Because I was 2015. Like, the, the convention was coming right now. So I started doing that. Thanks for what I have. Thanks for what I don't have. Like if I had already, then I started doing affirmations. But this thing... You have to do it, or the way that I was doing it, the way I was taught to do it, is with emotion. So you can say, thank you, God, for my family. Thank you, God, for I am an RVP. <laughs> has to be with emotion, with energy, because if you don't have energy and emotion, it doesn't change your brain. So I said, thank you, God, for my family. Thank you, God, for my brother. Thank you, God, for my sisters. Thank you, God, for my business. Thank you, God, for my uplines. Thank you, God, for Primerica. Guys, I was giving thanks for Primerica. I was making zero money, but I saw a way for me to change my life once and for all. I was being, I was 31 years old. 31 years old. And in 31, you're, you're thinking, if I don't do something right now, I don't know where I'm going to end up. I was working at a restaurant as a cashier, making $8 an hour. When they raised my, my, my pay, they raised it to $8.25. <laughs> In one year, I thought they were joking. <laughs> no, for real, I swear to God, they to- I told them it was a joke. And they told me, we're going to increase your pace, it's going to 25. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Miguel, almost anybody's getting a raise. I said, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, yeah, 825, but what's the raise? <laughs> 25 cents. I said, you're kidding, man. <laughs> it was true. It was true. So I decided to do something different. And then the positive self-talk, I started saying to myself, I'm an RVP and I behave like an RVP. I'm an RVP and I behave like an RVP. I'm an RVP and I behave like an RVP. I can make $5,000 a morning for America. I can make $5,000 a morning for America. I can make $5,000 a morning for America. Primerica, the company that I work for is the best company in the world. In the world. The company, the Primerica, the company that I work for is the best company in the world. People want to be around me. People love being around me. People want me to talk about Primerica. I was selling that to me the whole day. Because you're gonna find struggle, you're gonna find rejection, you're gonna find those things. And I was, I wanted to have my mind strong for those things to come. Because I read in a book called Think and Grow Rich, and if you do that, it works. So I started doing it. When I went to Bowie Wilson House, with one of the founders, he said, Read this book, Think and Grow Rich. It's a must. So I said, Okay, I'm gonna read it. The guy is rich, I am not. He said, Read the book, read the freaking book. <laughs> Pay attention to that. Listen to people that have the results that you want to have. You're going to talk, you're going to ask your broke friend if it's a good idea to do it. Don't ask him because he's broke. If he knew what to do in his life, he wouldn't be broke. Think, I want to be really be clear. Only judge people by their results. Know about what they talk. I judge everybody like that. If, if, Bobby and Candy Go Cool didn't have a business that they have, and the result that they have, I wouldn't be here. Because before, I get invited everywhere, and I sit with Omar or Willie. Willie, what do you think? Should I go or not? Yeah, go. Because they know that if I come here, I get influences. I listen to them. 
They can be telling me the right things to do or the wrong things to do. So if my outlet see that it's the wrong people, they don't let me go. If I tell them, well, they're cool, they're nice. No, you don't go there. Okay, cool. Okay? So what I'm telling you right now is that you have people that have the results to show. And it's a good influence. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Remember, I'm not getting paid. <laughs> this is where I used to live. I used to live in that house. And you're thinking, wow, there is a nice house. I didn't live in the house. I live in the room in the corner. <laughs> Renting. I don't want to even tell you the whole story because this <laughs> is not for kids. <laughs> this is the car I was driving. You said like, it looks like a nice car. Yeah, it was well painted, but inside it was a piece of crap. <laughs> I was driving and the interest said one day, it was an automatic car and it went from fourth to second. Oh, what's this shit? What happened? <laughs> and then, yeah, again, I was like, please God, don't let it break on me. Please don't let it break on me. Because I didn't have money to fix it. In that bed, that's my nephew's bed. I used to sleep there. Not in the one in the, the underneath. I was just sleeping in the one in the top that's more of it. Because he said, this is my room, this is my bed, you sleep there. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is <laughs> So, guys, trust me. In my positive science talk, I used to say, in Spanish, is, cada día soy más fuerte, inteligente, disciplinado, triunfador, líder, paciente, millonario, mi mente lo supera todo. In those words, I'm going to say, who else want? I was saying, I'm patient. I'm patient because I was getting crazy with that guy. <laughs> I was like, hi, you, you laugh like that. Ah, it's funny. It's not funny when he's doing it every hour of the day. Ta, ta, ta. You laugh like that. I'm 31 years old, and this little 12 year old punk <laughs> is telling me what to do. He said, it's my house. I, I need to get out of this place. I need to make money to get out of this place. So one thing that I learned from Bowie Wilson that is important, he said, put you in front of the mirror, get yourself in front of the mirror, and talk to yourself. He said, you have to get good at talking to people. <laughs> he said, I'm not saying that to you. You say it to yourself. You have to get good at talking to people. You have to go, like, okay, I have to get good at talking to people. I have to get good at talking to people. So I started working on getting good at talking to people, and I started reading. I started reading. The first book that I read was Think and Grow Rich. The second book that I read was A Will in the Devil. When I read A Will in the Devil, everything changed in my head. Oh, yeah, that's I said, now I understand why so many people fail, and why, why I was failing. Because it says that you're drifting, people drift in life. They start getting lost in little things, and then when they realize they're, they're in a place that they don't want to be, and they don't know how to go back, so one day, I remember Omar Opesa said, do you know why, actually, let me use it with an example here so you can understand. Do you know why Bobby and Candy are making more money than all of you combined? Really? And he said, because yesterday on a Friday night, he was working his ass off at the office while you were celebrating like you broke. I was like, oh shit, he saw me. <laughs> I was like, oh God, I understand now. Friday night, I was getting drunk at a party. And Willie was on an appointment. I said, oh, that's why. Yeah, those little things that you think they don't matter, they do. They do matter. So I started changing everything, my habits. And reading and following people like Hector Lamar. Omar Oropesa, that's a recommended lead from Hector Lamar. You can find that in HectorLamar.com. That guy, I learned so much from him, and I keep learning that I stick into that guy. He's making millions of dollars, I'm gonna follow whatever he's doing, whatever he's doing, whatever he's saying. Okay, so I started reading all the, most of those books that he has over there, I have read. That's why I learned so many things. That's why I, uh, when I'm talking to you guys, and then I remember something, I tell you, and this is not the presentation, but this happening when I was a kid, da, 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 because I learned those things there, so here. Okay? It doesn't have to happen tomorrow. You're not going to read all those things. You don't have to read them all in one month. If you're 50 years old, you probably have another 50 years to live. You're going to read them all and more. You only have to read 
10 pages a day, just 10 pages a day, just 10 pages. If you fall asleep, it doesn't matter, you should fall asleep too. <laughs> Another thing that happened is that one day at the graduation, they will have a graduation at the end of the year, they gave us uh, like plaques. And, they, and Lorena, she's my ally, she said, and the trainee of the year is Miguel Illich! I was like, what is that? <laughs> trainee of the year, I was like, they're so nice. They're giving me that plaque so I don't feel like a loser because I didn't do anything. <laughs> so I went on stage, I was like, Lore, why are you giving me this plaque? And she said, Miguel, because you never miss training, you do everything that we say, you always listen to Willie. Yeah, I do that. That's why you're a trainee of the year. You're on track to become an RVP. So I'm like, what? <gasps> <laughs> so I have a plaque. Last year, we were discussing if we eliminate the plaque. I was like, no way. Don't cancel that thing. Because you're an NSD, SNSD, making millions because you gave me that thing. I recruited 805,000 people because of that plaque. Don't eliminate the plaque. I said, okay, 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 come on. <laughs> this is what happens. The people that you surround yourself with is going to be the average of your result. The five people that you spend the most time with or you listen to is going to be the same thing that happens to you. So I know that if Will is increasing his income, I do like this. <laughs> My income is going up because I'm with him all the time. you got to be in, you got to be smarter than everybody around you. How does it work? I am the closest to my upline. I am. The, I fight for that thing. If I ever hear somebody say, "I'm the top producer, I'm the top agent for Willis," say, "Yeah, yeah, 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 wait, 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 what are you talking about? I am his favorite, <laughs> and I fight for that because that's money. For me, it represents money. I want to learn from him. I want to be next to him because I know how it works. So what happens? They're more experienced than you are. Your outline sees things that you don't see. If your outline tells you, look, that wall over there is black. You're like, no, coach, that's like beige. It, the black, the black wall over there is black. Do you want to make the money that he's making? Yes. The what color is the blue wall? Black. 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 <laughs> they see things that you don't see. They will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. You come here and you are so, uh, I'm doing this, what do you do with this happening with this, what do you have You recruit more people. Yeah, I know, but when you have this situation, you you recruit more people. No, I know that, Miguel, but when you do this, you recruit more people. You're asking a different way because you don't like the answer. But ask the answer. They are going to give you the answer that you need, not the one that you want. Remember, you have an awareness. That's why you're making the amount of money that you're making. They have a different awareness, that's why they're making the amount of money they're making. You use, stop using your head and start using theirs. <laughs> For real. I have agents that they ask me, say, Coach, I'm thinking about doing this, but I know that I'm broke because of my thinking. What I should do? Don't do that. <laughs> okay, Coach, you guys, you say don't do it, I will do it. And they're doing better. Say, oh my God, it's different. I didn't know that word. I said, I know, because I've done it, you had it. Okay? And if you listen up to your guidance, you will have the same results. I want to have us, Bobby, could you please be a, a person that's going to work with me today? Bobby just got recruited in Primerica. Come here, Bobby, so you want to become an RVP, right? You want to have the results that I want, that I have? Bobby, you spend time with me. Even if you're getting distracted, I'm going to get you to the point that you want, but you have to be close to me. You have to follow the way that I think, not the way that you think. You broke boy, right? <laughs> I am not. Do you want to get to the income that I am? Okay? So Bobby, Bobby, your goal to become an RVP is there. And Bobby says, yeah, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way. But in the way that Bobby starts working, Bobby starts getting distracted little by little. So Bobby then one day starts seeing the, a beard over there. And Bobby starts going up back to the beer, and then I think, Bobby, no, no, Bobby, we're here. We're here. <laughs> then Bobby says, that, No, my cousin is coming from Guyana, and then Bobby's going into a barbecue. Bobby, 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 here, remember the goal, Bobby. <laughs> then we keep walking, and then Bobby is there, saying, No, I'm going to a trip for the family. That I, and Bobby's going to let Bobby, Bobby, come, come, Bobby, stay on track, come on, man, remember. But Bobby, because he's close to me, he's getting to the point that he wants to. 
and Bobby becomes an RVP. But now imagine that Bobby gets a dream from America, and Bobby doesn't hang out with his RVP. He doesn't listen to the RVP, he's listening to his cousin. Bobby wants to go to his goal, so start working to your, going to your goal. Bobby, did you watch this movie, Bumblebee? <laughs> but Bobby wants to keep working, and, and Bobby's trying to get to his goal, and I'm like, Bobby, remember, there's a Barbie boy. The family is always first. You, we don't make money like this in this in our life. Bobby. <laughs> Bobby can be fighting to go there. He can't. Because little by little, I'm deviating him from his goal. Or, little by little, I take him closer to his goal. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you very much. So now, Bobby, get from our job. Yes, I did. Even, even if Bobby wanted to go away, since he's close to me, he gets back on track. It happened to me. I called Willie one day and I said, Willie, um, I'm not going tonight to the training because I'm going to take a couple of weeks off so I get my mind right, I get stronger, and I go back. <laughs> and he said, I was going like this. And he said, Willie said, Miguel, did you trust me? This is the moment that you have to go to the office again. <laughs> Do you trust me? Yes. Come to the office tonight. I'll see you later. Bye. So, okay, I went to the office. That day that I went to that office, something clicked in my head. Something. I went in sneakers, uh, clothes for the gym, and a green t-shirt. That's not an outfit for the office. I went there, and there was a guy like this, dressed like this. He said, Miguel, yeah, why are you dressed like that? He said, oh, I'm coming from the gym. But I was like, I wasn't at the gym. He said, okay, but you're coming from the gym, but this is not the gym. Do you go like this to your office where you work? No. Do you want to become an RVP here? Yeah. Do you want to be a leader? Yeah. Do you think people's gonna you gonna follow you like that? No. I was like, think about that. So I sat in the back. <laughs> hiding from everybody because I felt shame. I was like, oh, that doesn't work. That day. Something happened here. Willie said, if you're close to me, if you work with me, you're gonna make the money that you want to make. So really, do you think that? Yeah. Don't stop coming, don't stop. Be the first <laughs> arriving, be the last to leave, just emulate what I do. Copy what I do. I started doing that. They said that it was important to learn about the license. So I said, okay, I'll do the license. I'll do the license class. So Miguel, you have never done that. I know. Do you really want to do it? Yeah, are you going to learn it? Yeah? So I started really to learn about the license because Lorena told me if you go to licensing, you're going to license your agents. If you're not good, you're not going to license them. Okay, I started reading that thing and that was me and that's team builders, my team, my hierarchy in 2014. Just one person. And one person. Look at my goals that I have in my car. Become a regional leader by February 2015. Series 26 license by March 2015. 5,000 cash flow in a month, 100 calls by June 2015, RVP promotion by the convention 2015, read 12 pages a day. I wasn't able to read up 12 pages a day. But they were my goals. They were my goals and I sent them to Lorena because they stay accountable to your upline. Don't hide. I said, okay, I'm gonna send them to Lorena. Lorena on January, she said, okay, Miguel, this is the moment. You said that you wanna become a regional leader by February, it's your birthday, give you, give you your birthday present. So, okay, I'm gonna start working. I started seeing people, those because I told them, by this day, I'm gonna become a regional leader. Okay? One day, I woke up while I was working, and I found this commission. Uh, great news, remember the motivational quotes? Motivational quotes are, do not reply at Primerica.com. They arrive every day from Tuesday to Saturday at 4 a.m. in the morning. And they say, do not reply at Primerica.com, advanced commission. And he said, we're completely processing you, ta -da 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 something, you're getting paid $516. That was one day. The check above on the top, that was two weeks of work at the restaurant. Wow. $451 for two weeks of work, 516 for one day working in America. So I was like, there's something that's not working. I think that the restaurant is not a good idea. Do you think it's a good idea? No. It is not. 
So I got my licenses, my securities license. You need a license. I studied for the license by myself. But one thing that I want to ask you is, who wants to have a different result in your life this year? Stand up if you want to have a different result. What are you willing to do for that? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes is not what you're going to hear from me. It's not easy things. I'm not going to tell you, oh, you just uh, show up to training once a month and do three presentations a week. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is how I did it. No days off. Monday through Friday is for losers. Monday to Friday is employee mindset. Monday to Friday won't get you off the rat race that you're in. Monday to Friday won't give you freedom. You have to work from the, the time that the sun sun rise till midnight. Monday through Sunday until you break that chain that is hung holding you at your job. Parties, no more parties. You're not going to parties. You don't have to have Anything. Because they tell me, Miguel, Miguel, it's our dad's birthday. And I say, yeah, so what? Miguel is our dad's birthday. He's turning 72. I say, look, I've been celebrating his birthday for 31 years. <laughs> Just one day that I don't celebrate, I celebrate the next day with him at lunch. Not going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. I've been waiting to change my life for 31 years. And this is the moment I'm going to do it. But you have to do drastic changes. No more parties, no days off, no more drinking. Oh, Miguel, it's a drink. Don't drink. Do you want the money or not? Do you want to change something in your life or not? Don't put obstacles in front of you. Drinking makes you slow and it's stupid. Oh, but I smoke. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. Read the freaking of winning the devil and it tells you it's going to get you slow. Drinking, sex, and alcohol, um, and tobacco. Don't do it. I was like, I'm not going to do it. Because for once in my life, I want to change and have results. I don't want to start like the people that start the diet. And they're like, oh, I don't see any change. You don't see any change. You can see. Thank you. You don't see any change. You don't see any change in your life because you're going to the gym, but you're eating crap from the sunrise till midnight. If you want to see change and have like an emotion that is working, start eating healthy from sunrise to midnight. Drink water from sunrise to midnight. No more coal, no more crap, no more wine, no more no of that stuff. If you want to see a change. The same thing happens with your finances. If you start hanging out, stop hanging out with the people that doesn't make the money, you're going to start hanging out with people that makes, that makes that money, and you're going to start picking up the way they think. And that's what you want. Guys, you don't have to stop drinking for the rest of your life if that's just gonna bother you. But at least until you become an RVP. At least until you get to 200,000. At least until you get to 300,000. For me, it's until I get to 1 million. And when I get to 1 million, maybe I don't wanna drink anymore. Because I don't need it. My energy is here. I realize that the more I take care of myself, my income goes up. What's it? I didn't tell me that in school. <laughs> Choose your friends very carefully. Hold on, but, but my friends, they've been here for me since we were in kindergarten. You're complaining, right? Yeah. You're complaining because when you grow, normally your mindset grows. If they don't grow, it's hard to relate again. For me, it's hard to relate with my friends. They're still my friends. I love them. But I don't want to spend the time that I was spending with them. I cut it off. I reduce the time that I was exposed to them, and I increase the time that I'm exposed to my audience all the time. That's how my life changed. Don't worry, as the living the alcohol is not that bad, brother. Don't cry. <laughs> Who are you listening to? Who's in your ear? Whatever you're listening to, you know what happens? I'm not gonna take anything against Canada, I'm from Miami. But every tweet that I go, and they're like, hi, nice to meet you, Miguel. Uh, I'm from, I'm black, so I'm from, from, from blah, blah, blah. They don't tell, they tell me the, the city, I don't know what cities are here. I don't even know the cities in my in the United States. So they say, oh, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? And then I ask them, okay, what are your number from last month? Uh, 10 by 12,000. I'm like, oh, you know, the thing is that we're in Canada. 
I was like, so what? I said, oh, we're in Canada. Guys, stop thinking that because you're in Canada, you're not supposed to do big numbers. Take that thing. That's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. That's something that you think it is because I'm here in Canada and I've been prospecting the whole freaking trip and sending numbers to Bobby. So if I can do that, you can do the same thing. You have to just take that of your mind that you can't do money. No, we don't make money like that in Canada. Who's we? Who's we? When were you born with more people? You were born by yourself. <laughs> you decide what your results are going to be. Who are you listening to? Who are you hanging out with? One time Willie told me, you're never going to listen to anybody in my office. It's like Bobby tells you, don't listen to anybody from our office. You're like, Bobby, they're, are you your agents? He said, yes. You want to make their money or my money? Your money. Okay, from now on, you only listen to William Naranjo and Omar Oropesa, and that's it. I said, okay, coach. Whatever you say. I'm sitting one day in the computer with people talking and saying, yeah, yeah. Then I'm thinking, he's not making money. He's not making money. She's not making money. Bye, guys. <laughs> I left. Oh, that's so sad. Okay, it's your life. You decide to keep your life or you keep the other lives. You decide you stay broke for the rest of your life and get out with your guys in the office and you go and change something for your life. And actually, when you go and change something, you know what happened? People in our office were recruiting 50, 60, 70, 100 people a month. I was the one who started that thing. So now, the good thing that I decided to go out and don't listen to them has helped them increase their businesses. Everybody's income went up when I started recruiting more people, even that they know in my team, because they saw it possible. I was like, oh my God, it can be done. What I started doing? Or three presentations, or one recruit, or one policy, or one license a day. If you don't do any of those, you get 10 new numbers and you put it in your car. Because you're going to get whatever you want when you deserve it. I want to make $100,000 this year. Yeah, amazing. I want to make $100 million this year, but I don't deserve it. Why do you deserve it? Why you get what you deserve? Miguel, but my bank account is empty. That's what you deserve, brother. Based on your job, based on your work. But he said, but, but all his accounts is full. Yeah, that's what he deserves. You get what you deserve. That's life. That's not primary. That's life. But I realize that whatever, if you increase your value, you do personal development, your income goes up. Your income or your growth is never going to surpass your personal growth. Okay? What happens? You don't go back home without the results. If you really want to make it work, don't go back home without results. Make it a game with your kids. Kids, you want to go to this thing? Yeah! You want to buy a bigger house? Yeah, we got a bigger house. You want to get a new car? Yeah, I got to buy a new car. Okay, put a picture of that here in this yard. I'm going to come every day. And we're going to put papers in that yard. The more papers that we put in, the faster we're going to get to our dreams. Okay? So if you have kids and you have your kids, Dad, we're waiting for you. How many papers are you bringing? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go and find papers no matter what. You're going to go and recruit somebody, close a policy, license an agent, do three presentations, or take, get 10 new numbers. You're going to do something. And then you're going to do it and do it and do it. And then little by little, you're going to start putting papers in that jar without even thinking about it, bringing five, six, seven papers a day. And your income goes up. Your family, your family is happier. Your wife stopped bothering you for going to the primary committees. <laughs> this is my production in February 2016, 15. My income, the first month that I decided to do something, I made $4,931. I was making $2,600 in my job. Fe March, $8,700. April, $13,000. May, $11,400. Not even RVPs were making that money in the office. But the thing that happened that I realized that I have to move first. I have to be the one that leads. If your face is not in the leader scoreboard, you're not a leader. You need to put your name there. If you're not in the list, even at the bottom, you're not doing anything. You have to put your name there. And you need to show your agents how to see it. So they hold you accountable. Coach, your number is 15. You say you're only number one. <laughs> you don't hide. You don't have to hide. You need to be exposed. Okay, then I went, I finished number one in the future in the convention. I didn't know I was going to be able to do that. 
One month after I started doing that, that jar with 119 recruits for 102,000 in premium. 76 licenses. No, sorry, we were 70, 64 licensed agents. 64 licensed agents, we did 100 by 100. I moved to a better place. With the first commission that I got in Primerica, I got that boss by him. The second car, that's when I got to 100,000. Now you're thinking, I'm making 100,000 and I can't afford that car. Yeah, you're married, I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're married, you have to make 200,000 because two people have to produce for two, not for one. If you're leaving two jobs, you need to produce two incomes. No one. Stop going around with your wife walking everywhere. And we're prospecting. We're going to an appointment. We're going to... Oh my God. They say, the money's not enough. Suéltala. Take the hand off and let her go to an appointment. And you will go to an appointment. Two productions bring more happiness. Okay? Then I moved to a building that I wanted to move. On the beach and everything. Beautiful view. And this is so amazing. That day, and the picture on the left, Omar Ropesa said, I'm going to the auto show in Miami. If you want to come, come. Uh, I'm not going to pay for anybody's ticket, but we, you can hang out with me. He said, he's making a million dollars. I'm going to go. I called in sick to, the, to my job, just to go there to hang out with him. And Omar said, get in that car. That's a G1, the Mercedes G63. I was like, Omar, that's like 150,000. Get in the car. Do you like it? I love it. Get in the car. Okay, he took a picture of me. That's my picture, November 10, 2014. 2017, that's the same G Wagon, now it's my car. At that moment. Whatever you can think, who likes cars here? Man, you're gonna love this. That was the car in 2017. I used it for six months, I got tired, it was too tough to drive. And then I went and got an M4, BMW M4, convertible, beautiful, da 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 da. I used it for six months, and then the guy in the dealer told me, I got the car that you want. And I went, and I got the Alien GGTS. So fast, so cool, for singles or for rich couples. <laughs> but the most amazing thing that happened is that now I can afford two cars. And not too many cars. I paid $2,500 a month for that one. And I just ordered this one. So I'm gonna have the AMG GTS and the, and the Mercedes because I love both cars. I love cars. So you're thinking, I don't spend money in my those cars. You don't like cars? I like cars. You maybe like squirrels. You like, uh, I don't know, giraffes, animals. I like cars. So you make your money, you spend it the way you want. In 2017, I made $205,000. Remember that in 20. In 2014, well, out the, day, the month, the year that I was licensed, I made only four thousand dollars that year. Four thousand in the year. 2015, eighty-six thousand. 2016, two hundred and five thousand. 2018, three hundred and eighty-four. Sorry, seventeen. Two hundred and eighty-four. 2018, five hundred and fifty-five thousand. Do you think that my life changed a little bit? Yes. I have a different life now, and I, I thank God for putting Primerica in front of me, for putting William Lorena Naranjo and Omar Ropesa. Omar Ropesa is like I am with you right now. He's straight. He's like, you don't make money, but you're, you're, you're lazy. You don't make, and I was like, oh, he's too tough. He's too tough, he's too tough. I needed that. I needed it because you don't make leaders out of uh, pañitos de agua tibia, so it's in Colombia, like, uh, noodles. how is noodles. noodles. Noodles? No, no, no. Oh, no, pañitos de agua tibia is like, we, and you say, oh, my, my hand hurt. Okay, put warm some water. warm water here. You don't make leaders out of warm water. You make leaders out of hitting it hard, real, real, being straight. If you have a dream, you put your dream. This is a financial independence book. As a regional leader, as a regional leader, I put, okay, one day my picture is gonna be there. That's a, that's my, I take, I put that picture there, I stick it there. That's that, that, that's not, Primerica didn't print that thing. <laughs> I put my picture, I put it in the bottom, Miguel Illich from Miami, Florida, former occupation, realtor in salesperson, salesperson or whatever. 
Former income is that thirty thousand. Yeah, thirty thousand. Twenty six hundred dollars a month. That was actually like twenty seven thousand. And on top, I put from twenty one two hundred and fifty to four hundred ninety nine thousand. I said for the next convention, I'm gonna be at that. But you know what? It didn't work. It didn't work. I didn't need that thing because last convention I was at three hundred and eighty four thousand. It didn't work. It worked. Three hundred eighty-four thousand is more than twenty-six thousand. Do you know what I'm saying? I see. I I signed that and I put here. If you read here, it says codes. You know when you go to the the the, the convention.